Okay, recording started. Okay, so tell me again what everything that you were thinking of. Basically, the, you saw two, so there's one on site, saw an ice orb, smokes are coming down, there's a wall here. Uh, this is actually the second ice orb. So, actually, no, the stage is out of Util. But now you're at a conundrum, right? You're completely smoked out, your team's all here. Like, what are you, what are you thinking? What do you think you should do? Um, I was just buying time for the team, making it seem like we were still committing. Um, I was trying to go for a pick through smoke because I knew I knew a third one was there. Um, I heard noise, didn't know which one it was, which person in the team, but I knew somebody dropped. So okay. I was just trying to go for a pick, make noise while they slow rotated out. Okay. <clears throat> what do you, What did you plan after that? Um, just rotate with the team. Okay. I, I just wanted it to seem like we were uh, still committing or just waiting out smokes. Hmm. Okay. I think um, if you want to like try to sell that a bit further, you would have to have like three or four people do that rotation and have like one or two people stay behind so that okay. after the smokes dissipate, you make sure that whoever's on B stays at B. Alright. As opposed to like, they might think like, uh, if, th if there's no noise, like after the smokes are gone, and then someone like is likely to like jump peek to be along, and you don't see anyone, they're likely going to rotate afterward. If I were to stay B, would I should I ask for somebody to be there just in case of trade or just visually like they see still two people on B to make it seem more convincing or what? I think I think it really depends how you want to play it. Um, okay. As Vena, you don't really need to because you always have dismiss. Yeah, I have dismiss and heal. Right. And yeah, it really depends like how you want to play. If you plan to like re hit B, or if you plan to like have uh, three or four people. Rotate through mid and come from B link, and then you just like lurk through, lurk and sit back at B long or something like that. It really just depends how you want to play it. There's right. no no right or wrong answer. But as long as you follow some sort of theme, like if your if your answer is like oh, I'm going to have my whole team rotate through A, and then I'm going to stay B, but then you kind of like instantly just like pushing to B by yourself, like that wouldn't be a good idea, because that's not really fitting the theme of like we're going to end at A. And you're kind of like sacrificing your, your life at B. Right. Okay. So as long as you have some sort of plan, I think it makes sense. So, looks like three of your teammates, that's a really big kill. Yeah, they, <laughs> they stayed committed. <laughs> that, I don't, am I able to see, your, like, hear your, your voice, your, your comms on the, this video? Um, I... You should be able to. I, I, it might have been picking up my voice pretty quiet here. Um, I thought I adjusted it to where my mic was loud enough. I don't, I don't remember. Okay. What I would say is that you got this big pick. You can make a column because like your team hasn't really said anything about like after this pick. What do we do? Let's see. Let's see what they say. They say wait for the wall to go down. And that's kind of kind of it. But it seemed like you still have like three people they're like watching flank. It seems like they almost want to rotate. Like if if they're really waiting for this wall to go down, we should be like hugging the smoke. And like like right outside the smoke and then as soon as the smoke's down and the wall is down, we just go in. And that's like the actual plan. Here a spray, someone's on site. I think at this point you don't really have to take any fights, yeah. You just kinda of back out. You can stay a little bit longer, just like keep that guy in B. Because your team is like skilling up A really quickly. Oh, yeah. oh that's unlucky. Here you should start walking. You know that. that yeah, you know that Jet's A main. And because you just kind of full sprinted, now she knows you're here. So no Christmas here. I was jumping like crazy right there. Oh, that's... I should have died. Yeah. You have really good mechanics, but you have really bad habits here, like... This is a good kill. It's an unlucky flash. But it's like, after this kill, and then you should basically almost always expect a refrag to happen, and you just kind of... You switch your knife. Like, as soon as you get a kill, your your default reaction should be like, get ready for someone to swing me. Can I get back behind cover? Can I like reset the situation? Because something like that. Not just like, let me switch my knife while I'm out in the open. So yeah, you're definitely right, like, you probably should be right there. Okay, next wow. round. Stinger round, is this pre-nerf stinger? Post-nerf stinger, uh, no, okay. this is post, yeah. 
I still use Stinger. Ooh. Okay, works out. Again, like, you, you have a really aggressive team, right? You have, like, double initiator, you have 10 million flashes. You don't really have to, like, gamble these peaks here. I mean, jump peak is not too much of a gamble, but still, like, just ask for your kill, hey, can you flash uh, art for me? And you just swing off the flash, and it's like super free kill. I think I'm so especially if you're playing duelist, like a duelist initiator pair is like really really strong. And uh, also, minor thing, I would also probably buy Leo's. I guess that's kind of a personal because it's technically uh, sort of a save round. But especially as when I'm whenever I'm playing Reyna, and if I can combo a flash with a Leo, that just like gets a crap ton of space because the enemy team has to either look away from the flashbang like it's the one like the sky flash or like uh, KO flash or they eat the flash which is even worse for them and then followed by like arena layer so like they have no time to peek outs and also uh, break the layer right does that kind of make sense yeah so by yeah, combining like gives me two opportunities to swing on for free well it, it mostly just like builds a crap ton of space because they they absolutely can't challenge you without guaranteed being blinded um, is there also a better way to jump peek? Because I, I noticed something I do, like, I've done it a few times, is like, I've done normal jump peeks where I still have, like, my crosser placement stable, but then times like this, like, I'll just <clears throat> straight up be looking, like, at the wall instead, or just someplace completely different and just end up, like, needing to flick super hard if they swing me. So, like, when you're jump peeking, you're not really planning to fight them like 99% okay. of the time. The point of a jump peek is, is to get info, right? It's not to actually take a fight. Which was your original goal here, right? Because you're, you're jump, jump peeking this because you think someone's art, right? So it doesn't matter if your crosshair is like into the wall or wherever it is, could be anywhere, could be behind you, whatever. Like, well actually behind you would be a bad idea because um, when you're jump peeking, what you want to do is, is not even like kind of look at your crosshair or even look, because right now you're looking at the wall, right? Yeah. You don't necessarily be looking at this, like, physically with your eyes. I mean, you still want your model, your player model to be looking at this, but you want your eyes to be actually be focused on the minimap here. So if you look at the minimap, right, you, you, you can definitely tell, like, Jet is in art, right? And then you can play off of the minimap. Compared to, like, if you're, if you're jump peeking, you're, like, you're moving, like, really fast. You jump, you're peeking really fast. This is, like, a split second. But Jet is on the Jet is still in the mini map. She stays on the mini map for even longer than that. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. So most of the time, when yeah, when you jump peek, you should just like look at the mini map, focus on the mini map instead. I think I'm nice. So this would be a perfect time if you had a Leer. Not a big deal for now because you don't have one. But in in subsequent rounds, it's gonna be more important. Like when you need to take control of like a big area like a site for example here chaos is gonna chuck a flash which i think he did yeah he kind of just well i can't tell if it's a flash or a knife or it's a nade or something he has something in his hand but i'm gonna assume that it's a flash so i'm assuming that he's gonna flash through smoke and then if you combo that with a, a leer now suddenly you can your whole team can just like dive through the smoke with, with no fear basically because any angle that um, well at least mo most if not all the angles should get flashed and if they if the enemy wants to like peek from their angles then they would have to like uh, deal with the leer right what what would we do if um, we knew like later down the line uh, we saw Brim have the habit of playing in his own smokes like in this situation. If he was outside of main, let's just say on the left side, like hugging inside of the smoke, how would we want to play that? I would only be concerned if he had a shotgun, and he, cause like you guys have like three or four people here, right? So, yeah. so unless he has like a judge or something, he can realistically only get one, and that's it. But okay. if you're if you really want to be cautious about like pushing through smokes, then you can just like ask for a dog, cause you have this guy, you can just dog through the smoke. Like, that would probably be the easiest, easiest way. So 
Right. Any questions so far? Um, so in in a situation if my team tends to be like fearful, so if say if I were to get picked off, um, or if one of them got got instantly killed, like just say a lucky <laughs> shot through the smoke, um, mm -hmm. but we are taking sight control and they're starting to rotate, should I also like do the same or just try to convince them like we should stick? What do you, what do you mean by like, do um, the same? Uh, a lot of times like when, when my team dies uh, or I die, but we have multiple picks on a specific site, like I don't know <laughs> why, I'll see them start to rotate uh, to opposite site or like fake rotate rather than just committing even though like we have more picks off on a specific site when we just got picked off. Like, uh, I think for example... What I would say is that when you're in these types of situations, like even like this one, for example, where essentially, basically, like, time is of the essence, right? And it's hard to figure out what's the best play, what's the best decision in the heat of the moment. I think it's it's best to just, like, pick something that seems reasonable and just, like, commit to it as, as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. And I'm back. Um, right. Yeah, so like in this situation, right, like we got to pick an art. We've made a crap ton of noise in art. We're spamming utility. There's a knife coming that's going to ping probably all of us, right? And the, most likely the team, the enemy team is, is like rotating like already. They're going to be like in mid, they're going to be in mid connector, they're going to be CT spawn. Within like 10 seconds, they're going to be on east site. So we need to make a decision right away. What do we do? Do we just like push through this? If so, how? Um, do we fall back? Do we rotate? Like, these are all potential options. I'm not going to say which one's right or wrong, but I think the most important thing is that we commit to one of them, right? So, like, say if we if we don't commit to anything, then your team is just going to sit around in um, in A link and kind of get surrounded, and now we can't go anywhere without dealing with like random like off angles, like someone like sitting in the top mid or something, or someone like sitting in the water, whatever the case may be, and they might already have like three people on site A, whatever because we took too long to make a decision. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Let's see, in this case, I think you probably didn't need to heal there. Like you, you didn't take any damage. Yeah, you didn't take any damage, so it's kind of a wasted heal. Now you can't dismiss and you... Panic heal. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna add a note here, actually. Let's add this note. Looking up a major, a minor, is that reload too often? Or like, not even too often, but like, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say like, yeah, reload too often, and like, um, in general, like, after getting a kill, always expect a refrag. Great. And then, okay. Okay, let me pause here. I have to. So we got three picks. It's a four v two. Now we're in mid connector. What are you thinking? Uh, I know Ko's on site. Jet's lurking. So I want to go with the majority of the team here and rotate on to B. Okay. Good um, idea. Because yeah. that that just is three v one versus like two potentially on site. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So your team right now has that massive numbers advantage and. You also have a huge time advantage too. So both of those combined means like you can even like, if you're not really sure what to do, you can like just sit in this area for like five seconds and just like talk to you. Hey, what do you guys want to do? And you know, kind of take your time. What do we do here? Exactly. What do we do here? What do you guys want to do, team? That's the one thing I would not do. I would not go water because we can't trade. Like, <laughs> in this situation, I would either. Yeah, do what you're doing, like go to B, or <clears throat> turn around and go to A. Because if you go to water, like what Ko is doing, then you go to the water, you're forced to take a 1v1. And the Viper's like, well, I can't trade you there. <laughs> but you can trade this guy. Uh, okay. You're alone by the way, right now, you need to. 
I have this fight. One enemy remains. <laughs> he was last in sewers. Last I think I would have gone. Yeah, I would have stuck with this. I mean, you it seemed like you really indecisive for a bit. You're like, oh, should I pick up a gun? Should I, what should I do? I think you could have just reloaded around the corner, but it's okay. okay. You could do the singer. You get bombed. Right, you push me right yeah. after. Just play super aggro there. I would also not You're shoot at because you you know the KO is like right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just waiting for a good opportunity to peek you. And they know that bomb's down because now he said bomb is down. And right here, like you kind of switch your knife like randomly. That like this split second, he could peek you. You could be dead, right? So always keep your gun on here and keep keep your gun aimed at where the threat is. What could be, which is like where KO is. Like here, like you're alone by the way right now. You need this. See, like you're looking at sewers, which okay, maybe Rena could be picked from sewers. At this point, we like we lazily peek at at the at a link, and now we look at the wall again. Look at the wall. Like keep your crosshair focused on a threat, potential threat. Okay. Like here, you have to, you're forced to like make this crazy like sort of flick. And it's lucky you get the kill, but like you probably should be dead there. And then now you have bomb. Great, it's two v one. Um, same thing, same ideas as before. You have a numbers advantage. You also have a huge time advantage. You don't also have to like rush directly to a site. I would, I would say, still say that you should stay close with your jet as much as possible. And yeah, even then, I would isolate I would, into one v ones. Right. Even then, I would still go to your jet because that's where the gun is. Because we want to upgrade our, gun, our stinger to a, a specter. So here we're like we're too separate from the jet, and we can't really help her, which is unfortunate. But we could have avoided that mistake by like. Taking on time a little bit. I'll keep a gun out here. You don't know if you CT or not. Link. Okay, so he's burned both Leos. It's a fake. I think he made a step. Let me see. I think he made a step. Yeah, he made a step. Reload. You can jump peek this. Yep. Very good. Nice. Well played. Yeah. We will do that round. Fight. Let's see what we got. We actually won the save round. Very interesting. I like this. We're gonna be long. Just using our gun advantage. I always bring knife out for like quicker speed, but I do it way too often. I notice. <laughs> you know, like here you don't need to get warped. Give the warped like viper or something. Hmm. When did you go up? Up here? Up here? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Well, minor thing. It's not really on you, but the initiative is like really. Really passive though, you tell. Like I would burn a knife if I was killed. I'd burn a knife on like this this pillar because it's really likely the enemy team is yeah, really like angle. yeah holding close of a shotgun because that's like the best they can hope for on on like a save round like this. But here, like your whole team is kind of like dry peaks every angle, and there's really no need. I mean, you have so much, so many flashes. <laughs> like just burn a flash. Like here, yeah, I love this. All of this there. The problem is like your team needs to like combo flash with you. And someone needs to like throw an at screens or something. Instead of they just kinda of dry peek screens. I would not dismiss toward here. Whenever you dismiss, right, you should be dismissing toward cover, right? Toward some sort of safe area. We got this kill at B link, and then we're just like, let me just go further into into B link. We don't know if someone's to our right. We don't know if someone's like to the left of this this like wall. Right, so think of this miss as an escape, not as let me get more aggressive. Okay. So if you do want to get more aggressive, right, after this kill, you get this kill, you hold W, right? And then as soon as you see someone, someone like surprises you, then you use this miss to escape. Unless like okay. very, very situations where like you, you really need to like reposition after you're dismissed to like get closer to something, like maybe defuse a bomb or something. But those are like really rare exceptions. Most majority of the time, you want to think of dismiss as an escape, well, anti-trade tool. All right.
How how long is orb time? Like uh, that's something that I haven't peppered. Like roughly two seconds. <laughs> okay. So you get this kill. It's like one seventeen, and then oh, I guess in this case you can kind of put it immediately. But next time we'll we'll do the countdown. That's kind of greedy there. <laughs> so. We got to kill on B-Link, we have a big numbers advantage, we know that the, the, probably the most important fact is that we know that we have a big gun advantage, we have um, real guns, kind of, like like submachine guns and and, and um, marshals, but we know for sure that they only have pistols, because they, they can only afford pistols. Maybe a stinger, but most likely they're not going to buy a stinger, right? So, in that, that kind of situation, like, this is the reason why we went B, right? So we can abuse our gun advantage. But the more that we just kind of push in and take these like close range fights like here, and especially like in this situation where like you're by yourself, no one can trade you at all, then it becomes really risky to like play this position. Or it becomes really risky to try to take a fight from this position. Because in this example here, wall goes down, you take a fight, you actually get shot for two angles, which is unfortunate, and then you're dead, right? But that yeah. is not just like a normal death. Now it's like you're giving a the enemy team a gun, right? And the more that you give the enemy team guns on their save rounds, the more likely you're going to be losing those save round, those um, those gun advantage rounds. Okay. So yeah, I'd say, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Um, I also just noticed something too on the mini map. Um, I wasn't paying attention to where my team was, uh, because when the stage pushed out, nobody was like, even if I didn't die right there. Or let, let's just say, like, I continue to die right here. None of my team is positioned for a trade on the sage. Like, she's in a spot that right. she can't die in. So it's exactly. Just, I don't know, so like, it's another reason why it's it's really risky to push to B link, because if someone is sitting in heaven, like where the sage is, it would be completely impossible for anyone in your team to help you. Like, there's no way that anyone can trade trade you out outside of like I don't know, maybe like a jet up dash or something, <laughs> up draft or something like that. So if you don't have heaven control, pushing to B link is almost always a bad idea. Well, like maybe unless you have like a smoke covering heaven, maybe that could help. All right. Yeah, just try to think of like whenever you have a a advantage, whether well, it could be a numbers advantage, a gun advantage, right? You want to try to abuse that as much as possible. If particularly if you have a gun advantage, you want to take long range fights as much as possible. And abuse that, or oh, have a long range gun, have a marshal, have a vandal, whatever. And the, the, the enemy team only has pistols. Well, I can eat like two headshots before I die, where they they can only eat like three or four body shots before they die. When um, I, I originally thought, like, I was trying to play so aggressive here with Spectre because I had my ult, and I know, like, it doesn't really matter if like I waste it or not, but I just feel like added pressure when I do. And also, like, I have that advantage of quicker fire rate. I have guns compared to them. And mm -hmm. it's, like, me being a duelist, um, when I do lock duelist, like, I feel the need to top frag. And, I don't know, I feel like that <laughs> that gets ahead of me. Yeah, I think you just have to, like, think of it a bit smarter, I guess. I mean, you still want to take fights and stuff. Just think about which fights do I want to take and where do I want to okay. take those fights, etc. All right. Okay, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I think that's it so far. So I would say, let me add this as a note as well. It's going to be more of a major thing that um, when you have a your, when your team has an advantage, like numbers, or guns, etc., try to abuse that advantage as much as possible. For example. Gun advantage versus enemy eco round. Try not to take too many risks. Okay. Um, and actually, we had another thumb as well, because like, if you do insist on like these aggressive plays, yeah, another thing is that um, or committing to an aggressive play. Ask your team for help. Specifically, 
ask your initiators for some mito example flashes dogs etc okay <laughs> Yeah, let's see what's the guns. My priority is their suffering. Let's play a little bit more slow here. Yeah, your voice is very low. I heard you say let's play a bit slow here. Alright, next time I'll make sure <laughs> to have my mic volume turned up. Okay, so this this is another interesting round where this is technically like a like a bonus round where your team has um, kind of like mediocre guns, maybe like a half buy. You have two rifles and then like a specter and a marshal. Enemy team, enemy team is most likely going to be on a full buy. I mean, minus the KO, but the enemy team is mostly going to have rifles, right? So let me ask you, what what is your general plan when your team is on a bonus versus enemy team is on a full buy? Um, if I have enough money for next, I'll I'll full buy and I'll take long range fights. <clears throat> um, unless I'm going Phantom, then I'll try to play more aggressive, closer. Um, if I don't have uh, enough money, I'll just try to try to buy for next, or just uh, uh, try to convince the team for Team Econ. And if they don't, then I'll just like buy for next. Okay, well, let's say that you the whole team can buy for next. Like even if this this vector buys a gun, like your whole team can can full buy next round no matter what. But What's your plan like this round? You said something about like take long range fights or something like that. What, what specifically are you thinking? Um, I play mid a lot on Pearl. Uh, mid control is uh, what I like doing the most on this. And I already see uh, three people going mid. Um, so I'm just going to assist them in pushing that. Okay. Go for their trades. Because uh, I noticed KO, KO and Jet are together. Uh, KO has uh, SMG, and the Jet has long range rifle. So I'm expecting Jet to be able to get the trade for KO, <laughs> vice versa. And then that's a free gun potentially for KO if they both survive. So we can mooch off their guns. Okay. Yeah, I think that all makes sense. Anything else? Are you thinking? Um, no, I'm just I'm just following along here. Okay. I would say, so what I'm thinking in general is that on bonus rounds, your your goal is is not necessarily to win the round. Although winning round is, is definitely good. In general, you you're not supposed to win bonus rounds because your team is a, is at a um, good dis disadvantage from the start. So the secondary goal is to try to get as many gun upgrades as possible. So for example, um, look for fights where like uh, mid would be a good example, like you mentioned. Now you you take some fights in mid, you get some trades, and now at let's say at the end of it, uh, two of your teammates die and two of the enemy teams team uh, and two of the enemies die, and at that point your team can be fully upgraded and have like three vandals, and th while the other enemy team is still fully upgraded, has three vandals, right? So now it's now it's like a fair a fair round. That's that's the kind of setup that you want to get yourself into. Um, All right. Uh, let's say like a, a counter example would be like if you decide to go like be long there's two things that's that's wrong with it one is that your team most likely doesn't have language weapons in this case you, you kind of do so maybe like the vandal the marshal could go be long but the second thing that that's bad about going be long is that if you do take fights there and let's say you get like one or two picks let's say you get one pick and someone's like at screens something you kill a guy at screens there's no way for your team to actually capitalize on that pick besides like committing to be like there's no way for your team to like get to screens pick up the gun and then like reevaluate okay do you want to continue hitting b do you want to like go rotate to a or something in contrast to that if you take fights in mid then most likely wherever you get that kill like say you get the kill at mid doors you get the kill in art you almost always instantly get control of art we almost always get control of the mid door maybe you need to like throw a smoke at like uh, b link or something like further down but you can basically like get that gun upgrade right after you get that kill. So trying to think of like those kinds of fights that you want to take. You want to take those fights where in if you win it you get a gun, not just a pick, and the risk of, of dying is, is lower, right? And because your team has like a close range weapons like a Spectre, it's better that your team takes those close range fights rather than long range fights in general. 
So those are the types of things I'm, I'm kind of thinking about as well. Makes sense. Okay, so let's see how we play this out. <clears throat> I don't think you need to jump pick this because based on based on where the enemy's starting positions are, like when the, the walls drop, there's no way that they can pick you mid. <laughs> so you you'll always be able to get walk into mid before you, you might get peaked. One's on link, one's link. This is kind of a useless thing that we're looking at. Is notice your K was already looking one's at the door. Link, one's link. I was hoping the sky would stick with me and watch art. <laughs> yeah, so you should be looking at art because your KO is already like looking at door. You notice like right here, he even like takes a fight at the door. So like you're just looking at this door and there's, there's, there's no way for you to help him. There's no way for you to trade him. Okay. So yeah, I would be way more concerned about someone peeking from art. Okay, good idea. I like it. Uh, this is why you should ask for some tell. Or just throw your flash. Dirty. Yeah, I died at start around too, so I can't really help out future. Fine up. Well, Let's see who starts winning first. Well, what's the original Careful plan? Uh, Shun KO lineup for Flash that blinds all of A site except for hard right corner by Cubby. I was just pinging where uh, it doesn't blind. So it sounds like this is going to be in A hits. The sky is also coming in, so we have a 5 stack A right now. And uh, one thing I don't like is that like, in general 5 stack is not really a good idea. I'd much rather prefer having at least 1 or 2 people going through mid. And then if it's like one person, it could be like a lurk through mid instead, like very slow. Just try to like put some pressure, get a flank or something going or something. Along with like with 5 stack in general, especially as you get higher up in, in the ranks, is that it gets very easily shut down with like a smoke, a molly, uh, a sage slow, whatever. And now like your, your team's completely stopped and the enemy team like knows exactly where you are. So to c help combat this, what I would recommend is, is not full sprinting through this, but instead try to... Um, Play like explode contacts, if you know what that means. Yeah. So basically, your team, this when this wall goes down, your whole team should just like walk immediately, walk as, as much as possible, take as much free space as possible until a fight happens, until you get spotted, until like I don't know, if someone on the enemy team is like sees you from a main, and then like some bullets start flying. That's the time to like full sprint and then execute, not from from when the wall drops. Okay. So, by force putting here, if I was the enemy team, I would already say, oh, there's two, three, four, four people aim in, start rotating immediately. And this this gives the enemy team, like, an extra five plus seconds to start rotating. Yep, and then you get smoked, and there's probably going to be ISO coming soon. And then... There's not much, unfortunately there's not much communication happening, like we, we spin this dog, but we're not really like in position to like push off of it. No one's really saying, are we going through this? Are we going? Are we going? What's happening? We're just burning dog and we're just kind of sitting around. So it looks like you set up some sort of, you're coming some sort of setup here, some sort of uh, flash there. lineup. So it looks like the plan is still, wait, we're still going in. That was the second smoke. <laughs> I think that flash is like too complicated. I think like this yeah, smoke. Yeah, I, I I told him I I, I botched that uh, flash tutorial. <laughs> okay, it's okay. So I think you don't really need complicated flashes when the brim has given you like a perfect smoke. Like outside of uh, a nade or molly, like a, a well tamed nade, well timed nade or molly, your team can still very easily like bust through the smoke because you yeah. just have so much initial utility you have so many flashes and particularly you can just come with your flash come with your leer with a, fla a simple flash through smoke no lineup needed just just tell your sky hey flash through the smoke and then you just push your team just push through easy so just keep it simple but now yeah now the wish has happened now that uh, we got because we made so much noise like that's the other round 
we instantly get smoked out and then we're kind of iffy about whether we should go in now we have no, no map control now see yeah. notice like we're worried about a flank because no one was was looking through mid nobody had mid control we kind of like, gave everything up within like the first 20 seconds Kind of that was a bad I have to say, I like these peaks so far. Yeah. A lot of people, when they're kind of uh, me taking mid, they kind of accidentally uh, peak with W here. But I like how you're peaking this. You're peaking this with A entirely. Although your cross is not always at where it should be. Like here, you're, you're exposing yourself. The door, but you're looking at the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to his main. We can re hit. I feel we should go B. There's another R. There's another R. Another R. Now's the time to just pick something. Yeah. There, there'd be no time to go yeah. B. We got to do it. Yep, the whole W. Use the whole I'm W here. Throw this over the wall right now. Just go, just go, just go. Here, I here I would even consider throwing a leer. Because right like think another thing to think of your layers is is a way to hold space. I so like gonna, I'm gonna throw we have right now. Jet who's in, Viper who's in, and she's fully blinded. We have two very, very temporary smokes. Right? And Viper has not had any time to set up her smokes either. I mean she set up her E, but I'm not sure if her E's up. Kinda is. But at this point, like I would consider during this layer, because as soon as those two jet smokes are dissipated, like fights are gonna happen. Like the enemy team is gonna peek immediately for sure. And this is also why like the the vein is leering, so she can get space, so she can get control of back sight. Right. So here, I would throw my layer just like up into the air, so it covers as much area as possible, so that yeah, when these smokes go down, like this this uh, KO would not be able to like immediately take a fight. He would be blinded by the leer when this, this uh, jet smoke to the left dissipates. It seems like you had the idea, but yeah. you're you're way too slow. Which yeah. so the fight's already happened. She's already got he's already got two picks off of that. So that was a good. That was, see, see the part with this leer, like how it holds space. Now your your sky is able to to plant very freely. This jet who thinks oh the the viper ball's down. Let me take a fight. No, she's blinded by the leer. And you get a free kill, right? See how that worked out perfectly. So you just have to do the same thing with your 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 first leer. Do it early. Do it like right here. Do it right here. Smokes go down. This KO gets nothing. He dies. And then this becomes your second leer, so that your sky can plant freely. And this jet dies. At this point, we're just chilling. We're just chilling. We don't need to pick any. We don't even push this. Nothing art right now. At this point, I would like look at my teammates, press Alt for like a second, and see okay, what utility do we have? Do we have a flash? If we sell, then we can, then I can like make an aggressive play like this. Then, then I can make an aggressive play like peak CT, like peak flowers, or like push through and get dugout control. But otherwise, like I don't want to play too split because I still want to be able to trade my teammates here. And uh, I think actually, we don't have, yeah, we don't actually have dog. We sent the first flash. Like, like dog would be the easiest option. We can like dog through and just follow dog. That would be the best, easiest option to like if you want to play aggressively and like take control of like uh, like right close to CT or something. There's one art, one art now, one art now. <coughs> he went art. That's really lucky timing. Want to swing, but too, too slow. No, one art now. Maybe you just weren't aware. But like, like here, you hear these footsteps. That's not your teammates, cause. You, from from the minimap, your, your teammates aren't even moving. They're all just kind of sitting statically. That that footstep is coming from Art. So as yeah, soon as Art. yeah, as soon as you kill this Vienna, you should know the last person is Art, and now your sky is in huge danger. So we need to help her. Since I wouldn't even consider um, burning dismiss. So so this is like <laughs> the one the the rare exception to like burn dismiss to be aggressive because you want to reposition really quickly as opposed to using an escape. Because we know where the last person is, we know the sage is art, so we want to use this dismiss to reposition and get to a position where we can uh, trade our, our sky. 
Well, help this guy as quickly as possible. I, no, she's, yeah. I used it for myself because I saw my overheal was gonna go out. Yeah. So here we're, we're too slow. We bring this heal, which I I don't even think we we should heal because you only gain five health, but now you make a whole shit ton of noise. Now this thing is like tethered tethered to you, so this sage will n always know where you are for these next two seconds while you're healing, which is not worth the five health. It doesn't really help you at all. Or it helps you very, very, very little. <clears throat> and then... Five bullets. Okay, I guess the pickup makes sense. Okay, now we're chilling. We're chilling. We have a perfect crossfire set up. The only way this goes wrong if, is if one of us peeks too early. Like this. Like this. <laughs> okay. I was, I was calming to swing and chat. To KO, um, I heard her start to push downstairs, so I'm like, hey, swing with me, KO, swing, swing. The problem is that he's not in a position to swing, though, because, like, if you take a fight here, right, imagine the the, the Sage is exactly where he crossed his, and then you die, right? The KO, there's no way for the KO to swing the Sage <laughs> in this situation, if Sage is, is standing where he crossed his. It would take him, like, at least three seconds to peak that angle, and by that, that time, the Sage will already, like, we adjust across here. Okay. So what you had originally was perfect. Like uh, a little bit too far deep. A little bit slower. Put this gun. What you had here, like this angle here, right? But imagine you're, you're a little bit further away from the course. You're not like uh, angling yourself. So yeah. now that if the stage were to peak, right? Now she's gonna be sandwiched between. You and the KO. Guaranteed. There's no way she's going to win that. She'll just die to one of you. So that's what you want to, you want to set up. You want to set up your cross, crossfires properly. And not take these early fights like that. Let's see. Where is KO here? So if, if the Sage was like hugging the, the wall a bit closer, then she would uh, not get swung by that, that KO. Something, something kind of unrelated, but I'm just wondering if this is something I should continue doing or not. Is setting up false patterns on whether it be attack or defense. Like, um, I, I play a certain way specifically with like whether it be with my team or just me alone. Um, and then I just like it's it's like a front kind of. It's like I don't purposely play like that, but I do to trick them. And I, I continue that pattern, and then I just sort of break it, like depending on where we are in the game, or if they're getting used to our like our consistency with hitting sites, or how we hold, or whether or not we lurk. Like if I should continue doing that sort of thing or not. Not sure what you mean. Do you mean like just like mixing things up, or like I like just uh, putting it in the most basic way possible? Let's just say we hit B. Like, B is our main site. B is our site that we win at almost every single round. So we keep hitting B every single time. We don't have any lurks. Nobody goes A. But then, like, out of nowhere, I'm just like, all right, hey, let's switch it up. Let's have, like, some people, let's do split. Let's make it seem like we're still going B. So let's have two people make noise, B, uh, B long. We go down, make noise. Uh, they're going to automatically smoke us because they're going to be accustomed to us going to that site at a certain speed at this pace where we're just going in full noise. And then other people will just be slow pushing an opposite site or lurking or going through mid trying mm -hmm. to play off picks. Like, should I continue to be doing that or playing like that? Or Are you talking about more like a, a mid-round adjustment of like your team strategy? Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just switching up your pattern that the other team has grown used to. I'd say like, during that match. Yes, it's a good idea. The problem is that it's hard really, really very hard to coordinate in solo queue. So if you plan to make your adjustments mid round let's say like your your initial plan is like like you said, we're just gonna like uh, run it down B and then something happens, I know we lost one or two people, they wall us off, they double smoke, whatever, and now now our plans change to say, okay, let's uh, retweet the rotates and like go to A, go to mid or something, right? But in in that kind of like mid round adjustment, <clears throat> your call out or your plan needs to be like, like as simple as possible. It needs to be like, okay, let's let's back out, let's rotate A, done, that's it, that's the plan. Or like let's back let's back out, let's walk through mid, or let's uh, um, 
And you guys go through, you guys rotate mid or A, I'll sit back, make noise B. Something simple, something you can, you can a plan you can convey in like two to three seconds maximum. If it's like something that's like really, really complicated, like in solo queue, people are like, huh, what, what are you talking about? You're like, if you're like, uh, uh, Viper, go, go R and like KO King flash through mid, can you like uh, burn dog and like try to bait something, blah, blah, blah. Like, I already kind of lost you. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Okay. So keep your mid round adjustments. And this is kind of a different story. This, this is more specifically for like solo queue because it's, it's hard to communicate with randoms. So like it, in solo queue with like randoms, keep things as simple as possible. If you're on a scrim team and you have a duo or trio, trio whatever, and you're, you're like on the same wave lap, you have like 100 games played with them, then yeah, go for it. Because they're all making you know exactly what your plan is, even if you um, say like something for like two seconds. They immediately know, okay, great, I'm going to dog mid, I'm going to knife this thing, I'm going to like flash and pick for you. This, I already know the plan, based on like two words and something like that. Makes sense. Okay, but what I'll also say, since this is also kind of catered more towards solo queue, is to avoid putting yourself in those situations in the first plan, in the in the first place. So if your original plan is say, um, let's go B and let's take B, right? And then just like five sec B, we have gun advantage, whatever. And then for whatever reason that we get stopped at B, for the next round or next bunch of rounds, try to like if if our, if our uh, we have another plan to, to also go B. Try to think about that that last time we went B and we got stopped and like what could we do about it? Like what went wrong, right? And then the next time we try it, we'll, we'll fix what went wrong. Maybe what went wrong is that um, we went B, we got them to burn a bunch of util, and then we were just like too hesitant. And then um, because we didn't have someone like uh, we didn't have control of mid, we didn't have any presence at A, that we just wasted a whole bunch of time sitting at B doing getting nothing done, right? So to remedy this. The next time that we try this B, B uh, strat, let's say like have one person sit mid. And, and, uh, let's say like, yeah, we have so, like, one person sit mid, or we have like one person like walk up A, so that if this B hit does not work, now you still have a, a whole bunch of value. You can like rotate really early because you still have mid control, or you have one person who's like already walked into A site, so now you know like A site is completely clear, right? Those kinds of things. So try to like play around from your initial plan like make your initial plan initially adaptable as opposed to being forced to adapt mid round does that kind of make sense yeah so you already have like a plan a plan b immediately that everyone knows okay okay any other questions so far no okay I can all... get out of my way okay very good there in this scenario, I kind of prefer using the Sky Flash, but not a big deal. Because, like, your Leer is uh, not replenishable, but Sky Flash is. So, in general, I would prefer using Sky Flash here. Not a big deal. <clears throat> this is a good time to Leer. I think you probably should Leer at the same time that this dog peeks out. Here, this dog is exposed, so this dog could be dead already. You lose a little bit late. I really don't like this like well, but it's okay. Let's see, what was the gunners actually? Yeah, this is a really, really, really bad time to Viper Wall because the your team is at a gun advantage. You want to like be able to play long range angles, but this Viper Wall is not going to let you do that. Okay, goodbye. So this one, I think, yeah, the general the general plan for this round, the reason why we're going B is because we have gun advantage. Plan for be long. Everybody sits be long, and that's it. <laughs> Pick B. B hall is clear. Like U hall is clear. Like we're so you notice that we get this pick at uh, like if it is dead. This knife clears the entirety of B hall. Now we know for sure B hall is clear, right? And we're kind of like looking at this because we think someone's there, but there's kind of a gap in our awareness here. And now notice our team is like really overheating, which they kind of have to because this right bolt's really bad. And now your team's like forced to push into B link. Like I want to be there with them. Here we're just like looking at nothing, looking at nothing. 
there's no way like enemy's gonna pop up in front of us. Could be fine. Okay. Okay, what's guns? Let's get these idiots. If you want to be like really in max, <laughs> Let's get I would find out where the KO plays and then push that angle. <laughs> Cause you know the KO doesn't have a gun. Let's see actually, so like this round, Vayner dies. Let's try to take a guess where KO is going to be. Okay, KO was, was B link, so I would expect KO to be mid. Should they towards R? Pinch it. He played, he played Link. Wait, one's R, one's R, one's R. One R, one R. Oh, yeah, I would, I, would, I would fight this KO immediately. They might push out yeah. Process. Process is kind of low. One more side. Hey, one close sight. I think close right. This is time to ask for a kill flash, which you don't, fortunately. Quest is really lazy. It's entire time. Like here. Like, what are we peeking? <laughs> we just... Or are we peeking and then like, we're exposed to two angles at the same time. And now three. There. And then, we're peeking with W here, like, we're peeking flowers, notice? You know, who is our crosshair? It's at a wall. Prepare for help. And then, Fire. this this is the only decent peek, right? <laughs> there. Yeah. Prepare for help. This is the only decent peek, like, we know where the, the threat could be. The crosshair is there. Great, perfect. That's what's supposed to happen. Not... There. Not the danger, oh. danger could be flowers. <laughs> Let me look at this wall. <laughs> a, a bad habit that I have that I do often is yes, but also, um, <clears throat> like I'll just tend to look with my eyes rather than just placing where my crosshair where I think they'd be. I just look and then I just hope to flick on them rather than just like using my mouse to look instead. I think, um, one way to alleviate this habit is to purposely play at a super super low send like than what you're used to. So that... super low, I play really low sends naturally. Like I'm always fucking swiping my mouse hella hard. Which what's your ETPI? Because it looks um, like it looks it like was, from... it was originally 400 DPI at 0.3. And then I upped it to 500 DPI at 0.35. You see, you said 400. It's at, uh, yeah, 400.3. Or 0.35. So 140. Huh. I just kind of guess it was like kind of average to slightly above average because like the way that you're. Be able to swing these both angles. <laughs> I know it's bad. There. Prepare for hellfire. You will not. <clears throat> That's all. Yeah, too much overheating. Too much overheating. You will not. Notice your team. Your KO is chilling. He pushed. He took the space. And he's chilling. He's chilling in dugout. <laughs> If you want to like make more aggressive players, you need to like burn some util here. Make okay. make this fight advantageous for you. And also, you kind of pick your W here, which is really bad. That's all. Let's see your KO. I think he still has a flash. Yeah, he still had two flashes. Like he could have just he was like, hey KO, flash TT for me, and then, and then you peek. Like no more of this try peeking when you have so much util available. Spike down B. Betrayed us two picks, I would just commit. 
I have this bike. Mid. If you want to be really mid max, because like, let's see, I think, pretty sure they're on a save. That's why they're playing so close. Yeah, they're on a save, right? You want to be really mid max? You get bomb. You see this gun here? You juggle that gun towards sight. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's a high chance that someone's gonna be flanking and they might pick up that gun. Keep your crosshair on the threat. Crosshair with the threat. Where's the threat right now? Right now there's none. Okay. Now is the threat. Where's the threat? Could be CT. Instead, we're looking at the, this uh, this pillar here. So I'm gonna add this to note because it's become more and more of an issue. That uh, crosshair placement. Yeah, I'm. I'm just looking with my eyes. Like, I I have head level crosshair placement when For I sure. like yeah. pre fire angles, but like in the moment, I don't know. I like, like this is a perfect example. Like when I was planting, I was looking underpass and then I was watching heaven too, because I saw Kale was holding link, and Jet was also holding that. But yeah, I was mm -hmm. just looking with my eyes again. Look, even if the jet wasn't looking at at Link, the thing is that you have this nade covering you, right? So no one's gonna pursue this nade. I mean, if they push the nade, fine. Then you die, whatever. They they also die to the nade, so it's a good trade. And there's no need to look at heaven either, because you have this pillar that's covering heaven. So the only threat right now is gonna be CT when this wall goes down. One enemy remaining. And what did I know? This is <laughs> this is a sage flanking. Okay, last guy's be link. It's good. You can basically push up the flash. Good. Proper proper amount of of heating there. Like you know, this guy's be link. We're all looking at be link. We we're looking at at the same time as our team. And then we're just chilling at this this pillar until Flash comes in. And then great. Now we're holding W. Great. Uh, any let me pause here. Any questions so far? I think we're kind of seeing, getting a general idea of like what the trends are. Nah, I'm good. Okay. Nah. Then I'm gonna actually gonna skip because we're like halfway eight eight rounds. So let's skip to like a defensive half. Let's see, what do we do in defense? It's you! <laughs> okay. It's you! Kind of a minor thing, but I would say like make your mini up a little bit bigger. Because if I know you have this big circle, right? But like it's only taking up like half of the circle. So either make the circle smaller or make the map bigger to fill the circle. It's kind of I spot. wasn't I wasn't sure how to do that because originally I just made it so I could see the entire map. And yeah. then I just I don't know. No. Didn't didn't, didn't know how to make that like ring smaller. That's a it's a minor detail, but as long as you can see the whole map, I think that's that's fine. So actually let me pause here because I was about to start where looks like we're playing B Link. What's your plan? And I'm, I'm and also why are we buying playing... legal? Um, you've got mail. I bought I bought Deagle because um, there there are days like this was one of my good good ish days with Deagle. Um, when I have it, I can contest longer fights, and because majority of people don't have armor, it's a one hit headshot. Whereas Ghost is two. Okay. Um, lately, I've been buying two over here for <clears> Ghost, <throat> but. I'm holding an off angle here so I can hear noise shops and main if they do go B. And if they push up a link, um, I'm in like one of four different angles they'd have to like pre aim for. Okay. So I felt like this was a safe spot. Okay. I think all that reasoning makes sense. Uh, the only thing is like if we plan to be, play B link, you, you're probably going to be stuck playing at the bottom of B link because you want that. Uh, that long range advantage of your deagle. That's the only thing I would say, but yeah, I think all that makes sense. Okay. Now we're kind of at a disadvantage here because we want to take a long range fight, but this is not how we do it. We don't fight through mid. 
So this is this is a close range angle. This is another close range angle. This is a mid range angle. So this is a close range to your left. So I would say like if you want to rotate, I would rotate safe through um, through the CT or like through um, through A link or something. Like there could be a fight in mid, and we're at a disadvantage. Hey Waldo. Spike planted. Okay, let me pause right on here. Ask you, what are you thinking? Um, I know <laughs> one's definitely backside, potentially holding Cubby as well. Um, for contact, if somebody pushes through flower like Sky is trying to. So right now, I'm just waiting for smoke to go down. I'm with Viper. Uh, so either one of us will fully get a kill or trade each other off here. Yeah, they make sense. Know, I know they're holding main because they they have burn Molly or flashes anyways. Yep. So yeah. They're I, playing post plant. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. There's not much that you and your Viper can do here because of the smoke kind of blocking you. <clears throat> Second thing is that your sky is still kind of lagging behind. So, you, ideally, you want to like kind of wait for your KO and your sky to. Like, can control the CT, can control the flowers, peak dark out a bit, and then you guys can like explode onto site altogether. Hopefully, when by then the smoke will be down. Okay. So yeah, I think that all makes sense. See Jet is at dugouts. Jet hit sixty. The sky is playing a little bit too yeah. slow. We like we really need the sky to like help us flash. Last player standing. Yeah, I guess not much we can do here now. I don't think you should save the deagle. I think you should look for a fight. Flawless. Hey. <laughs> so we got a shorty. I'm guessing you're just gonna hold this door. I'd say that we should still buy Deagle. I really like buying Deagles or like one cap guns on Vayna because it allows you to abuse your dismiss more more easily, if that makes sense. So for yeah. example, you could be like, um, you could play like really aggressive at, at A main, you could play aggressively in like an art and like peak mid. Um, you can play aggressive like B long, something like that. Try to take like an, an early fight Get your one shot, your one tap, and dismiss out. Makes it so I don't need to fully commit to anything. I mean, you can kind of do the same thing here, but with your shorty, the problem is that, yeah, if if they don't come in, you're kind of useless. You're like, you need, if someone peeks you mid here, then you, you're dead. <laughs> whereas, I noticed, whereas... I noticed they were full sending A, though, which <laughs> is why I felt comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I just mean like in, in general, you want to try to like maximize your value, right? So like, say that uh, if you bought a Deagle, you went A main, right? And if they come A main, great, you get your one tap, you dismiss out, you guys are up one. If they don't come A main, you can continue pushing through A main, like looking up with your Deagle. Maybe pick up an orb, maybe get a flank going, something like that. Like, you can still be like useful, even if they don't come A. But here, you're not very useful with your shorty, unless they come mid. So they're not mid, now you're kind of useless. And you go for this flank, which is a good idea, but <laughs> the flank has... Planted. You're not really going to kill anyone, because you only have a shorty. Unless someone happens to be like, right around this corner. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like your, your only hope of like, getting a kill there. Okay, what do we have? We have... Handle... I would buy the Leer. Make sure you have full util. Utils in general is very strong in this game. There's no point in holding on the 400 bucks. So yeah, this is the angle I would I would prefer you to play if you had a deagle. And it makes sense that you have a vandal, you play the same angle. If you're a bit closer, then the deagle isn't as... Uh, like you make yourself more vulnerable if they had uh, plastics and such, like on pussy run. They're going A everywhere. Hey, 
Sí. I'm trying to see if there's any any way that, that tips us off that there's early presence at A. So jet is like far back behind back sites. The team doesn't come a single thing. And she dies, but there's other two people. Yvepu should be coming. That there's a flash on sight, they're taking sight, they're on, on sight, they're planning. Like all that should be happening for your Viper, but unfortunately yeah. she's not. Who's up far? Spike planted. So with that information, so I mean you can't really control your teammates. Ideally they should be coming for you so that you can make smarter decisions faster. But in this case your team is not. So going forward, what I would like you to do is to just rotate early and try to predict when and where the enemy is gonna be, where the fights are gonna be happening, and make sure that you're in those fights as much as possible. Especially because I think like see there's a scoreboard here. So I think you're top fragging. Yeah, you're definitely top fragging. So like, definitely when you're top fragging, I want you as as many fights as possible. Because like your teammates are a bunch of bots. They can't win any of these one v ones. I want you taking those one v ones. Make sure that those one v ones become two v ones. When when should I anchor? Um, it depends. <laughs> it's very depends very situational. Okay. Right now, I, I would say don't even bother anchoring. Just like, you think they're going to be A, just go A. Like, if, if someone looks B, then fine, we take it, we lose the round, whatever. Next round, we'll, we'll, we'll think about there could be a lurk. But for now, they're, they've they been 5 sending it a lot. And we've been losing A a lot. Easy. This is the second time, this is the second or third round, I think. Losing A. Okay, anyway, same round. So we rotate. This guy is just like too pussy right now. She needs to like. <laughs> she most likely has util. And like, okay, so let's see. Pretty sure she still has full util. Going a knife. No dog, no flash. Start rotating. Yeah, this guy has full util. She starts walking. Goes up with this KO. She should have traded the KO. She sucks. At this point, she should wait for you. At this point, you should come to your sky. Hey, flash for me. Hey, dog for me. Like, why are we walking? Like, we have all this util. Why are we dry peeking? Why are we peeking this dry? Why is this guy looking behind? <laughs> hey, hey, sky. Flashy to hey this guy, dog for me. I'm gonna push through flowers, dog flowers for me. Instead of this thing here. Like, you have the right idea, okay. We're gonna leave. We should take space off that. A little bit too slow. We shouldn't split here. We should pick flowers really, really quickly. And then, if flowers is clear, don't even bother continuing the site. Like, push with our sky. Trade her out. Okay, now we know last guy CT. We really go for tap. Shit, how did our sky go? We know what we're going to Yeah, we know he has a stinger. We know he has a stinger. Unless he, he you hear the gun drop, we should assume he still has a, sing, a stinger. Therefore, we should play a bit further back. We should play together. Yeah, you kind of get for already peaked. Also, I think based on where the bombs planted, you don't necessarily have to be like standing the side. I would stand on the opposite side of sight. We should play together. Let's see. Player standing. Yeah, because the bombs plan on the opposite side, so by you standing here, you you're like forcing this one one to happen. And your Viper can't trade you because she was her original idea was just tap bomb. Yeah. Mistakes are adding up, but really the main the main thing is still like we need to, we need to be taking control of our teammates and like ask for utility. When your team is like indecisive, they don't know what to do. Like, you should know what to do. You're the duelist. Make the call out. Hey, flash for me, dog for me, whatever. I'm gonna push this thing. Cover me. Trade me out. Bait me. Whatever. The hunt begins. Uh, minor thing. I would, uh, because you're Reyna. Uh, uh, because of the peak, I mean, like, um, in terms of economy. Well, that's another thing, too. Economy, actually. You're, you're the only one with a gun. <laughs> so. 
one thing first thing i was going to say was that uh, as vena you should be more comfortable um foregoing your shields because you can rely on, on a heal and trying to make sure you have as much utility as possible so whatever can help guarantee that first kill should be prioritized it's like leer like okay so and second thing is that yeah so we have uh the only phantom here and your team is like basically saving or like on a half sort of buy like your sky is buying everyone else is like saving um let me pause here let me ask you like what are you thinking because um, it's, it's not necessarily a bad idea i just want to know like how how do you plan to take advantage of the scenario i i was gonna go mid um because <clears throat> i knew i would be within that 30 meter range for the one shot headshot rather than the 140 ding uh, it's so, actually 15 meters. Wait, 15? Yeah. Oh. So 15 to 30. So like, if you take a fight from like doors to top mid, that's beyond 15. I think you would need two headshots. Okay. Or headshot and a body shot. Well, I, I know shops is within 15. Um, so that was a guaranteed one shot <laughs> headshot. And it basically just turns into like an SMG at that point. Yeah. That one taps. So okay. I was just hoping to get a pick mid. Um, okay. And until now, um, I thought I could also hold top mid as well with this gun. And I'd have um, one heal and then one dismiss in my mind. So I could just instantly get out, reposition, or just overheal if needed. <laughs> what do you think about your team's economy? What are your thoughts about it? Um, pretty shit. Normally, <laughs> okay. normally, um, uh, what's it called? Um, I save 16, 16 or 19. That way I can full buy next with like guns and everything. This time I didn't. Um, I was wanting to be greedy. Uh, I, I can't remember, but, um, normally if we were in this case, I'd want to flank like just try to get a free gun uh for my team or just mess up their econ a little bit because a lot of them are about a max okay let's let's put this way you say you want to get a free gun for your team right how do you plan to do that where, by potentially getting killed mid. Where, where do you want the fight to happen mid okay and then what's your plan for taking mid where's just gonna be by yourself um i I thought Viper would come up with me, but if I remember correctly, I think she was just holding main or pushed up mid like way later. Okay. Um, but yeah, I wanted her to play my cross or at least contact to swing with me. Okay. Any other thoughts so far? Um, no. Okay. So I like the idea. I mean, most people are going to say like, yeah, you should be like full saving as a team, blah, blah, blah. I'd say whatever just it's, it's solo queue it's okay to make crazy plays and especially on an eco round like right now this is this is an eco round for your team you should definitely look to make crazy yolo plays like as crazy as you can think within the realm of reason not, not like like run up run like knife out with enemy but like crazy plays where like oh hey let's let's five stack a we'll retake b uh ko can you knife a main and sky can you flash a main boom there's there's a strat and then the idea is that you have, you're the hero phantom, and you get this phantom as many, in as many fights as possible. And hopefully you take one or two fights at a main, and now your team is fully upgraded with guns. That's the crazy plan. And like, if they end up going B, okay, fine. We lose B, we lose the round. But at least we had an idea. At least we had a chance that we could have won the round, or we could have like, um, got a bunch of kills off of it. If our plan is to go mid by ourselves and like pray that hey viper can you actually go mid and trade me even though you don't tell viper a single thing <laughs> then that's not gonna work <laughs> yeah and even if you do ask the viper to trade you like she has a classic like she's not gonna trade you <laughs> and it doesn't <laughs> she's not gonna trade you like she's gonna peek from art and she's gonna die immediately from like another headshot <laughs> and you have you have no util to help you peek mid you don't have any teammates near you, you don't have any flashes, you don't have your leers. All you have is a phantom and light shields. 
So I like the idea of buying a Phantom on, on Eco Round. I actually do it a lot. I, I like being the, the hero Phantom Vandal player. The thing is that you have to build a plan around it that in, hopefully, ideally, involves as many teammates as possible. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, yeah, I think uh, what I would do in this scenario is just like, yeah, the easiest option is just, just have five people, hey, everybody, just go stack A main. It's an eco round anyways, whatever, they take B, whatever. Or, I don't know, five stack B and just run at them at B. And then the, really the only thing to worry about is like a kill flash. Like if you guys like pushing through uh, B long and you push past the pillar, really the only thing to be worried about is like a, a kill flash because you're all in the open. But besides that, you easily be able to take all that space with five people running at them backed by a phantom. So, okay, well, let's see how they play this round. This KO is like AFK and piano. <laughs> I like to call that spot piano, by the way, because there's actually a piano to his left. Oh, that like music shop? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I love this already. We hear noise, and we run to the action. That's exactly what I want to happen. When you're the person with the gun, your goal is basically to have this gun be in as many fights as possible. Whether that's you, or your teammates, or like whatever, right? Love the idea. Hopefully you, you were thinking about that when you just started rotating. So like, yeah, gun out, look to take a fight, there's, there's bullets flying, I want you to swing. Swing and trade immediately. Triple fast kill. Let's see, where is your sky? Your sky is going to heaven. Unfortunate. I don't think she should have waited there. But, I, let's see. She's just some bullets. No detail, here's the first flash. So I'm going to assume that she still has a second flash. So even though the KO is dead, we're both smoked out, we still have one piece of utility. We still have a sky flash. So you could still communicate, hey sky, flash out of the smoke in the next five seconds, three, five seconds, whatever. Because by then your hopefully your Viper will be grouped up with you, and then like you'll take a fight after the flash happens, and then you either kill someone or you get killed. And then your Viper trades you, or your Sky trades you, and then the, the Phantom lives on, basically. Where would I communicate Flash? Like where? where, like where would I try to direct it, or is that just solely dependent on the person whoever is playing with the flashes? I, I mean, unless you have a specific idea where you want the Flash to land, I would just like leave it up to your Flasher and, and hope they have a good idea where they want their Flash to land. I think most important is really just kind of the timing. As soon as you see, okay, we're about to get double smoked, this the sky is going to be heaven, you just say, hey, sky, flash for me in the next three seconds, right? That's the most important part. Where the flash lands up, if it ends up landing in, in B Hall, that's unfortunate. Hopefully, this guy knows he, the, the idea is to flash through smoke and then push through the smoke. But even if you uh, push through the smoke, like flash, flash happens, push through the smoke, and then you die to someone that's at B Hall, well, that's unfortunate because there's too many angles to watch. But hopefully, your Sky would trade you out or your Viper would trade you out. And the idea is that you just take this early fight that's as advantageous as possible. Maybe you can't cover everything. And then hopefully, you just like you trade and you continue taking more fights with this Phantom. Does that kind of make sense? So, timing. I would right, right here where this frame is paused, the smoke's going down, start communicating immediately. What the, what is the plan? We're gonna flash the smoke, right? That's that should be the plan, because making this long rotation like we're gonna rotate to CT or something this is this is nonsensical. We want this is this is not taking a fight. This is running away. We have the phantom. We want to take as many fights as possible. And now look now we're trapped because we don't have any util. We have a sky flash which we should be using this util to push through the smoke, right? Imagine if we did this earlier, we could be in a position where we still have sight control because we, we flash through the smoke and then you, the sky, and the vapor will already have pushed through the smoke and have control of sight. I mean, now, like, you give the enemy team more and more time to, like, set up. They could be B-Hall now, they could be screens. There. Now we're worried about a flank because we're taking too long and then we're mollied out. Alright, bro. 
<laughs> That's it. Wipe his money, actually. You should break this wall as soon as possible. This kind of money details that kind of add up. Like we see the stage wall, we see it's connected to the to the all the way to the wall, so we know the bombs planted from belong. Our first thought should be like, if we have any spare one second, two seconds, or any spare bullets, just spend it on breaking a section of the wall, so that as soon as possible we can start going for a tap. We can start going for uh, like open up more space for for on site and try to threaten like. Like a bomb tap or like force the enemy to be really uncomfortable or with the worry about two angles now instead of like the left side of the wall only. Not the worry about a broken section of the wall. Yeah, it's unfortunate we get bit melted here. But the idea is still gonna be the same, right? Is that the enemy only has to look at the left side of the wall because the section none of the wall is broken. So now this guy is like kinda of trapped because no, we spent any time or ammo on breaking the section of the wall. Okay, any questions so far? Um, no, not really. Okay. Of course. Let's go through a couple more rounds here. Let's see. Now we have guns. She has, she has a vandal. We have a stinger. Hopefully you press tab at some point, so we can see what our team's loadout looks like. As usual, this KO is AFK. Okay, we don't press tab, which is unfortunate. But, the one piece of information I did get, is that your jet definitely has a gun. So now, you have a teammate who's playing the hero Vandal role, so... In general, the goal of this round should be, because I'm assuming that, because we're saving, I'm assuming that the rest of our teammates are also saving. This Vector probably doesn't have a gun, this guy's probably not going to have a gun. I'm going to assume that Jet is the only person who has a gun. So I want to get this Jet, help get this Jet in as many fights as possible. That should be my goal this round. So let's see, the Jet is playing B-Hall. What I would probably do in this scenario is uh, I'll probably skip this thing by Deagle, go B with her, and just tell Jet, hey, I'm going to push to B, bait me. Something like that. <laughs> Something very simple, and it's guaranteed to get your Jet in a bunch of fights. If it doesn't get your Jet into a bunch of fights, it buys your team a whole bunch of space. You push to B, you tell your team, okay, great. The enemy team is not B. Let's stack, everyone else stack A. Or start rotating early. Within like the first five seconds of the round, they can start stacking. And then be ready for like that A push or the mid push or whatever. And meanwhile, you continue pushing to B, you push to T spawn, you, you go for a lurk, whatever speed that you want. And then you just continue getting more and more value. That's what I would like probably uh, go for this round. In the meantime, like, the jet can like start looking for a better position, start looking for a better fight. She has the Vano, she wants to get into as many fights as possible. There's multiple. Jackson. Jets, back hall. Yeah, flash melee, get into the fight. Nice, we got two vandals. Click the wall. Yeah, this is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. Because this wall is now solidified, no one bought like you. I guess you're reloading. And your jet's reloading, unfortunate. But you have a spare, like, one second here. You can probably break the left section of the wall, or at least threaten to break it. If you at least do that, then this person, this enemy, I think, right? She has to consider whether do I continue holding the left side for this jet swing, or do I keep my crosshair on the right side because someone's about to break this wall, right? So now it's a kind of bigger and bigger issue, and especially as you play against more and more stages, like this needs to be like more. Um, more important, I guess. So, uh, how do I summarize this? Uh, whenever you see an enemy sage wall, look to break it and deny its value as soon as possible. 
The longer the wall the longer the wall stays up, the more and more value it gets over time. Okay. Well, do you, do you understand uh, what I'm trying to explain? Well, yeah, it adds yeah. it adds different um, points of entry for them to worry about right. rather than just isolating the two, which would be hull and then backside by double stack. Yeah. Okay. Back home. Kill. Back home. Oh, where's your sky? Back home. Back home. Just right here. Yeah. How much you could have done there? Someone said back hall, so like you, you can't really watch all three angles. So this guy just needs to trade you there, which she does. Okay, great. Now she needs to flash. Oh, <laughs> I'm guessing this is some diamond initiator thing, just like back pick everything. Okay. So let's see, what's our money? I can't really hear what your comms are. You're saying something, something about me. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to turn on my mic next time I record. Okay, so we're another scenario where, well, we guess now we have kind of two options because, like, the only person who is without a gun is really just Viper. Uh, we have two, two Vandals and Jet Knives, which is almost good enough. Ideally, you have at least four. But okay, K was buying a marshal for some reason. But okay, um, K O can like get good value by playing the marshal would be long. But we have two options here. We can choose to play a normal round, and because we have almost a full buy round, or we can choose to continue the theme of let's play the hero vandal and get these vandals as many fights as possible, take early fights, and try to upgrade our guns for our jet K O viper. So, two options here. Let's see how we play it. It looks like we're just going for a default. So, because we're going for a default, uh, we have KO and Belong with Marshall. He can probably solo Belong. Viper is in a useful spot. She has a classic. She's not going to be able to do anything from, from heaven. Everyone else has a gun, and, J and Jet has, has knives. Um, I know th this is not on, on you. I would like to see this from this Jet is for her to take more risks. She has knives, she doesn't have any risk of like losing anything, like dropping a gun to enemy team. And with knives she can like go for aggressive peaks, she can like lurk really quickly. I would really like her to like go push through A main. And maybe you can even encourage her and tell the jet, hey, push through A main, I'm gonna I'm gonna leer through art for you. Right? You can like leer Let's see Together. if you look at it. Through like that upper window. Uh, not even through the window because the leer goes through walls. I would leer like through the left side of the box. So it kind of like, um, like Willow, as soon as the wall drops, you, you toss the Leer, and then that buys a lot of time for your jet to just like sprint up. Because they're, okay. they'll be blinded, they're not going to hear, well, actually will they hear? Probably not, they're probably only going to hear the eyeball. So that buys you a lot of time to like, be at the orb or past the orb, by the time your, your Leer dissipates. Or they shoot the Leer, and now your jet knows for sure there's people coming in and she can prepare. Have as many people, so, just kind of a minor thing, it's more on the, on the jet, but there's things that you could do to help encourage encourage certain things that you want to happen. Also too, that this jet's been playing backside A for several rounds, and she's consistently lost A sight. So I'd be very, very wary of this jet, like even holding A. I just got a running headshot. Amazing. Yeah, the has got wrecked. I am waiting. This back with no comms as usual. We already planting, the is nothing. And as I expected, the Vepu is holding heaven with a classic and she can't do jack waiting. shit. <laughs> At least calm, but like, oh, I wonder where she got the, got the Guardian from. This Leer is really slow. This jet is like already in. The smoke is dissipated. As soon as we clear this B, B, B hall, kind of, we want to go immediately. This jet this jet's dashing, we need to go immediately. Toss it, toss it, whatever, throw it up in the air. 
Is he gonna use it? He did use it. Okay, good. I think that loop probably saved you. <laughs> okay. Six rounds. What do you mean? I'm thinking you're not going to be in time. This wall, there's three on sight. There's four in sight. And that's the fifth. Unfortunate. There was a lurker. I think probably I want you to not play mid. It hasn't been really been working out. Probably I'll, um, the like the point of playing mid is so that you can like quickly rotate to cover. The problem with that round is that you you only have util or a gun. Cause like here, like you're in a position, you're fully well equipped to take a mid fight and then dismiss out. The problem is that. Right around here, sky flashes and pings. We know they're A. Now our value has has dropped significantly because we know that it's very unlikely that the fight's gonna happen mid. If it is, it's gonna be because there's, there's some lurker, and then we're gonna lose A very quickly because your sky is in one in one position. So it's kind of um, uh, I'm not sure to describe yeah, like a min max, I guess, or like. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that uh, in, in a subsequent round, because we realize what the issue the issue here is that we're we're kind of locked into this mid play, and then if they don't go mid, we're kind of screwed. What I would say for subsequent rounds is to instead of playing mid, play like a main, and then look to take a fight a main, or try to take a guess of where the enemies are going to be, and try to take a fight there instead of like playing mid, looking. Or playing mid, going for a quick rotate. Because you notice in a trend so far is that we've, we've been playing a lot of mid, right? So, like here, we're playing art, we're playing art, we're forced to rotate, we're rotating, and then fortunately, we like, oh, the jet gets like a bunch of picks here. Let's go to another one actually. So, our jet doesn't pop off. We're playing art again, and then what happens? They We get we lose someone on B. Now what do we do? We're, we're in a conundrum here. Do we do we full sprints? Okay, we choose the full sprints. Even if we full sprints, they're already planning because the Viper's not calling anything. Let's see next round, what happens? Okay, this is on the stinger. Let's go to the previous round of that. There was a round that we were playing that was like back here. Yeah, here. Here we're on the other side of mid. And then what happens? We're like, we're losing. These fights are happening. Your two, both your teammates are like super low health already. Right, this is the trend, right? We're playing mid a lot, and then we're stuck either rotating, quickly rotating, or lurking. Those are only two options, and both those options have been suboptimal for us so far, because our goal so far has been you to take, take fights as soon as possible. But those fights are not happening in mid. Those fights are happening in A site. We're happening in B site. Does that gonna make sense so far? Yeah, no, it is. So yeah, well, I would say let's see which round. Amazing. This is kind of hard. Maybe we should just play retake together. As many people. Again. Two playing hard again. I just got a running headshot. Okay, yeah, this is the round. Same round that uh, we play mid, and then they just push the site. This is the same round. We're playing mid, they just take a sight. No, we saw one more round. I'm assuming the call it here is stack B and Hold mid a little bit, we take A. That looks like the setup that you guys are going for. You will not kill my ally! Okay. Yeah, if so, it's, it's about to work out really well. You are powerless! 
101 Reyna, by the way. The only problem with this, I like the idea. So, I'm assuming, because I can't really hear your comms. Your, your comms is like really quiet. I'm assuming the players is, is have three people stack B, me, Viper, will hold mid. Right? That's the idea. We play, we take A. We see nothing mid. There's people you coming B. At this point, yeah. our team is in a really good position to like hold B. We have three people on B with like one range weapon, a marshal. They're close to res in the open. We know no one's mid, no one's A main. Like, this is a very comfortable position. The only problem is that I would much rather prefer someone else <laughs> to be in your shoes right now. Because, again, I want you taking the benefits as possible. But you can't really do that safely here because you you're, need to be looking. Yeah, that's what I mean. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, and I have I have better better usage taking on fights rather than just right. instead. So I would almost like it might be kind of difficult to like come to your team. Like hopefully your viper might realize or something. Well, I don't know. Maybe talk. Like, it's hard for me to say. Maybe say, hey viper, watch like hold mid for, in case of lurk. Or like viper, can you can you lurk and cover flank? And while I would like quick rotate, something like that. That's kind of like if you because like technically the viper is closer to rotate. The but fuck? yeah, the problem is that you want to get in, fights, in many fights as possible. But because you're in, in a lurk slash flank position, like all this is like really risky, right? One of the night is really risky. And now like you kind of lazily clear shops, you lazily, lazily clear all these angles, which are kind of forced to because a lot of fights are happening, and it's hard hard to gauge. When a fight is about to happen, like you don't know if someone still be long, someone could still be like be left here. We don't know. We're kind of forced to drive because it's a 50-50 whether someone is there and then we need to take the fight, or they're not there and said your teammates are taking the fights. Like, but now we're in like a really bad spot because like we, it's been difficult for us to figure out when to keep our gun out. When do we need to start walking? When do we need to actually start picking things properly? And we kind of get caught with our pants down and die. Spike planted. Last player standing. Okay, last round, voice round. Okay, good. Let's see how this one plays out. This is what I want to see. Sword oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> I think we get kind of lazy yeah. here. Sword connector. Yeah, I, I was looking at the wall again. Okay, same problem though. Same problem. Where we have this idea that we're going to suddenly play aggressive. Like, so actually, it seems like a 50 50 here. So, what I would like to see is that I'm going to sit A main, play an off angle, get my one tap, hopefully I'm not using a spectre, hopefully I'm using a one tap, like a deagle guardian or something, get my one tap, dismiss out. That would be my plan. But, here, it looks like you have a different plan, because this is not an off angle. This is the first angle that they're going to see when someone is pushing A main. And, you also stop here, right? Like, you're... You're like, you're walking up, you're walking up. I would continue pushing further so you get as much as the offing as possible. But then you pause, as if like, oh, I'm going to hold this angle. But then you start, but then you change your mind and like, oh, I'm going to push up even further. And I'm going to hug this corner as if I'm going to like swing. Yeah, and you start looking at because you're prepared to swing, right? This is the same kind of theme that we've been discussing before from like many, many previous rounds that you're, you're going for an aggressive play here. You're going to swing a main, you're going to pick a main. But you don't spend any utility. You don't ask for any help. You don't say, hey, Sky, can you flash through art for me? Like, flash through the hole in art so I can swing a main, right? You don't do any of that. You just, like, you make this little play, and then you die. That's been the, one of the biggest problems so far. Imagine if, if you did get your Sky on board. Hey, Sky, just flash for me. And you did this exact same play. Even though you're looking at this wall, like, you probably still kill this jet. Well, you probably do a bit quicker like you probably do it at the start of the round so that the jet is not like past the corner um by the time you're you're all peeking here but imagine if this guy this uh, jet was blinded even though you're in a position to kill her you probably could still kill her because she would be blinded for like two seconds and then you can choose oh do i continue the fight maybe the venus also flash maybe I could fight her too or do i dismiss out that makes sense okay any questions so far no. Okay, so let's see. I think this round is probably over because you're dead. And then your, your team is like heavily relying on you. Oh, maybe not. Your team's popping off. Squad. 
Which one is this Molly? What the fuck is she Molly? Why is in the sky trading? <laughs> okay, she was healing, that's why. In that case, you're a Vepri shouldn't peek. Vepri should wait until this guy peeks together. Dog, flash, please. Dog, flash, you have two flashes. Nade! <laughs> Nade, flash! Flash this! Flash it! Oh my god. We're saving the flash for next round. Full control. Wait. Saving the flash for next half. Hopefully you're seeing like what I'm seeing from your teammates, right? Your teammates are not using util properly. We have two pieces of initiative two toho. And then what do we do? We dry peek the sage. We have two pieces we have three pieces of utility here. What do we do? We we dry peek the sage. I mean we didn't win the fight, but it could have been better. So, but what this is telling me is that my, my teammates don't know how to use their utility. So I need to be one of the one to tell them, hey, flash for this, flash this for me. Flash whatever, nade this thing, dog for me, whatever. Direct the utility for them, because they don't know how to use it. So, so recently, like, like I said before, I've been playing really bad. Like, mm -hmm. my, my average headshot rate was 40 for like a solid month and a half. And then it's slowly been declining over time as like I've I've been climbing up because I want to say probably the past two months I was like hard stuck plat one and then as of like two weeks ago I just skyrocketed from plat one up to diamond one right now and I almost <clears throat> ranked up to D two. Okay. Um, I am majority of the time top frag on my team. I just recently dropped a 40 bomb game where I went like 40, 25, some shit like that. And when I do try to like, I, I'm full of mistakes. Like, I, like even in game, I know when I fuck up, I tend to calm it out. I just talk to myself and what I can, I don't know. I talk to myself and I say what I can do better. And then that I sort of just get into my own head mentally and that fucks me up even more. But when I try to ask my teammates for their usage of util to help assist me, or uh, I give them a suggestion, not in like a demanding way, but hey, maybe you can do this instead of playing like this. They take it like 90% of the time, they take it as like an insult or I'm just trying to boss them around like they don't know what they're doing. And then they purposely ignore me like throughout the entire match even my comms and it's just like when i do try to give minor suggestions or just even even trying to help me it it just tends to get ignored i think it's so the, the way don't... that you're framing it you're framing it like a suggestion like hey you should do this but like if, if i'm this guy and you tell me hey i should flash this i, I need to know like why am i flashing this like what, what's the idea right I think the way the sh and and you're also putting putting it into their hands. Like you say that Sky, hey, flash this way. Hey, KO, do this lineup. Why am I doing this lineup? When should I do this lineup? Am I doing this lineup for you? Am I doing it for myself? Right? Instead, of try to frame it like as if it's part of your play, as as if like they're they're doing some piece of utility because you want to do something. You want to push to A main. You want to push CT. Whatever. Right? Frame it that way. So in the previous round, let's go this round here, where we're, we're considering making a play a main, right? Instead of, hey Sky, I, I think you could flash a main, right? <laughs> what does that even mean? So tell Sky, hey Sky, flash a main, I'm going to push a main. That's the plan. Easy. And then 90% of the time, she's going to flash for you because you have some sort of plan and she's helping you with that plan. And not just like flashing based on some sort of recommendation, some sort of like idea, but actually a concrete idea, something that's actually going to happen. You're actually going to push a main off that flash, not just she's flashing for some reason just because it's recommended at some random time. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So try to frame yeah, no, that makes sense. frame the util based on a plan that you have and make it very, very, very clear what is the plan, what is the follow up. Why are we flashing this? We're flashing this because I'm going to push. We're flashing this because we, we think someone's here. Uh, we're, we're throwing a molly here so we can clear this angle. It, most, most common example is like, um, ask, like, well, let's see if this is because this is defense. Let's see if there's a round that's like B. Here's a B round. Start of the round, right? 
instead of leaving, I would say, "Hey, Sky, flash me on this corner for me." I'm gonna, I'm gonna peek belong. Can you flash this corner for you, Sky? Great, perfect. And then the next kind of round, let's say she starts doing this consistently for you, you can start seeing when you leer. Tell you, tell your KO, hey KO, can you knife this column for me? I think there's someone gonna be playing close because they're an eco round. Simple, easy. Ninety percent of the time, like, he's gonna do it. It's not like, hey, I recommend that you you knife this thing. He's like, why why am I knifing this thing? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that makes and then, sense. Let's see what else. And yep, there's, there's actually someone there. So if you had knives, we could have like denied that flash. Then I would say, hey, Kale, can you nade screen, um, nade screens for me? I think someone's still playing there with a shotgun because they're on eco round. And let's see. Okay, like, the screens happens to be clear because those are only two people. But in general, you can kind of like set these precedents of like what are actually good ideas based on plays and explanations that you give. You say, the play is I'm going to push B-Long. The play, the, the idea is that I think someone's holding close. That's why I want you to knife. I think someone's could be screens. That's why I want you to nade there. I think someone could be inside smoke. That's why I want Sky to dog for me. I'm going to push, I'm going to push with dog. Can you dog for me? Can you flash through the smoke? I'm going to push with the flash. Have some sort of like very concrete uh, follow-up off of the util. Then it becomes second nature. Over a, a couple more rounds, I st start to realize, okay, this is a common play we're, we're consistently making. We're consistently pushing belong. Every time we're pushing belong, uh, I remember this Reyna, she told me to knife this thing. Let me do it again. I think it's a good idea. Great. I remember that one round, she told me to, to, to nade screens. And what do you know? Someone with screens and the nade killed someone. Something like that, right? So as you start like making these callouts of based around their utility, the utility that you want your team to use and where you want it to use it, they start to um, not just like hear your recommendations, but actually start to ingrain it into their gameplay. Then it becomes more and more automatic as the game kind of progresses. And hopefully in the next game, they'll do the same things without needing Arena to tell them what to do. But that will probably only happen when you get, I don't know, Immortal or something. <laughs> Radiant. Well, it's the same shit probably happens in Radiant. Alright, well shit, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. It's really good. I gotta I gotta just timestamp it basically. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Any other questions so far actually? Um Just a, I mean, th this is kind of a generalized question here, but mm -hmm. um when when should I learn or not learn, um when should I play aggressive or passive? I would like that's in general it depends, but there are some rule of thumbs. Rule of thumb being that if your team is at a advantage, you have numbers advantage, you have gun advantage, positional advantage, whatever, then you should in general look to play more passive, look to play slower, abuse your advantage, maybe have more time advantage, maybe have gun advantage, let's take long range fights, you have a time advantage, let's play slower. You have numbers advantage, make sure that any fights you take, that you have multiple people swinging and taking those fights, so those fights become 2v1s, not 1v1s, don't give 1v1s. Then, now you have those general ideas, right? Think about the opposite. If you're at a disadvantage, you don't have a gun advantage. You have pistols. You have a numbers disadvantage, right? So, in those scenarios, you want to play riskier, you want to play more aggressive. You want to take those early fights. So let's, let's give an example. Let's say you're on eco round, right? Because that's easily the most common example. You want to make some sort of crazy play. Uh, trying to think. Well, I can't remember which round it was, but one of the crazy plays I, I was thinking was like, we have like five people stack A main, or five, five people stack B, what B long, whatever. Buy like three marshals. Let's say there's a let's say they're like on defense or something. Let's say like. Uh, Let's see, last round they push B. Let's make a hard read here. And we're on, we're on like a half buy, right? Let's make a hard read to say, hey, team, it's, it's all stack A. And then we take B, something like that. And we just push we'll push through A main. And then you'll buy like a Phantom. It, this, like this will be around like you buy like the hero Phantom, something, get the Phantom many fights as possible. Right? It, it, on paper, it sounds like a really risky play, right? Like the chances of you winning around is like, relatively low unless it goes perfectly according to plan like unless 
Um, a whole bunch of fights happen in A, and this Phantom takes like all five fights. That kind of thing. Yeah. And if they if they go enemy team goes B, then you're kind of screwed. But this this is the round to like take those risks. If you if you were to play because you're you're at a um, gun disadvantage, your team only has like half by you have like one rifle, everyone else has like, pistols. If your team decides to just play normally, like here, right? Your team's playing completely normally. Imagine everyone has pistols or a stinger. You're not gonna be able to hold anything. Or you might be able to get one kill, you get traded immediately. Right? So like this jet is at this like every angle is at, is at a disadvantage. So you need to like look for some sort of risky play to help equalize that a bit. Alright. So that's a, an example with a gun disadvantage. Let's say you're at a numbers disadvantage. Let's say that it's like uh See a kind of round like that. This is like three, four. This is like one v three. Let's say let's say you're the viper in this scenario, right? You're the viper in this scenario. You're in heaven. You know this won't be long. You know that there's two B hall. If you have if you want any chance of winning this round, let's say that the the, the bomb has like plenty of time left, so like it's actually feasible to actually defuse the bomb. That your your goal right now. Let's say this is, this is also last round too, so you, you don't have a chance to like save your gun. Then you have to play as fast as possible. You have to like take fights as quickly as possible. The longer that you take, the bomb's gonna just explode. The longer you take, someone else like those two people at B um, at B Hall, they're gonna set up a crossfire. Or that sage who's at B Long, she's gonna get close up to that smoke. And as soon as you peek out of heaven and take a fight at someone at at B Hall. Then she's gonna swing and, and, and trade you, right? So to help counter that, you need to like take fights as quick as possible. Any one ones that you get, you should just take them as quickly as possible. Because most likely you're not gonna get another one one later on. Does that kind of make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So here, like, she's like playing a bit too slow. Great. The KO actually gives her a free one one. So that's this is actually an opportunity to like win the round. If she takes one one, wins it. Takes one with the brim, wins it. And then and now it's just her in the, in the stage. That's totally winnable. Okay, any other questions so far? Uh, no. Okay, so let's go to this round. Your team punches it out. We, talk, we had this long discussion because we realized your team is really, really bad with the utility. Let me see how's the guns looking. Okay, I would go for another hard view here. That's it. Your team can still mostly buy. You might, you might have to go with like Guardian here or something like that. But I would look to make a really, really hard read and say that they're going to 5 stack B. And therefore, we should also 5 stack B. Maybe have one person look mid. Because two things. One is that they've very rarely gone mid. They've been mostly A, mostly B, like every single round. And the last round, they went A, then they lost. So I would expect the enemy team to like 5 stack B this round. I'm just going to make a hard read and call it. Part of it is because I don't trust my team to like hold the angles properly. The other part of it is that because we're not on a full buy. So if we... Okay, same kind of idea. If, when we're at a disadvantage, we want to like look to play aggressively, take risks, try to make some harder reads. I'm gonna guess that they're gonna be all B, I'm, gonna, I'm probably just gonna be, start looking mid more aggressively here. I like the idea that we're actually leaving A for retake. Yeah, here. I would actually prefer the Sky to play this side, because the Sky can like uh, spend her flash for A main, and that can indirectly cover A main for us. I would also, because we're planning to make an aggressive play mid here, we're peaking mid, I would ask this guy, hey, can you flash mid? Make it a little bit more advantageous for me. Yeah, here. I like the fast rotate, I don't like the, yeah, here yeah, call. Here. These vipers. <laughs> has really bad callouts. Well, I'm one shot already from a slug. Healing over here. Yep, just as I expected, there's gonna be like a whole bunch of people be. I'm kind of sus that they haven't pushed out yet though. Okay, now they are. Kill. That's for flash. Kill flash. 
Flash. Sky. Well, no, now, now Sky is like a cost in that ball. Like here, like, you get two picks. Your team is about to overheat. Hey, Kale, flash for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing. <laughs> nope, this Kale. I have two flashes. Let me just try pick this. I was trying to grab that gun so badly. Minor thing here is that I don't like us being behind our teammates. We're kind of baiting a little bit. It might be okay if we had like a van or something, but we have a stinger. So what I would kind of prefer because of these, our team's overheating and we're about to overheat as well is that I want us to like um, either one burn dismiss immediately because our team of KO is just like holding W so that we make first contact. We can spot for our KO. Then we act as like the human flashbang, so to speak. And then KO can like swing off of that. Second thing is that I would get close to this corner here and swing from there so that you have like maximum displacement if that makes sense so like you know the idea of like peeking Watch close up. yeah peek, no, no, peeking close from the corner versus peeking farther from the corner the farther you peek from the corner the slower you appear but the closer you peek from the corner like you for what's called like ferrari peeking right you just swing close from the corner yeah. You can swing like super far distance relative to where the enemy's class here would be. And it's also doubles doubles up too because you have a stinger, so you, you in general you prefer being closer to the enemy. But here like you I like the idea, so you have the, the right idea, you want to dismiss. The problem is that you're dismissing a little bit too late. This KO is already like in view and you're kinda of just kinda <laughs> now now you're baiting him instead of him baiting you. Oh, it's all right. I, I, so now we're in a bad conundrum here. Now we need to just like find some way to chill. I should pick the wall. Pick the wall immediately. Don't make this safe for them. Yeah. Now they plant the safe. They plant pretty much freely. This shouldn't happen. Especially if you have a stinger. You have full ammo. You can break a column, and then just go, like go hide behind cover. And now the sage needs to be like, oh shit. Do I stick the plant? And also 50-50 if the sage dies, because she doesn't. She doesn't know where the jet is. The jet could still be like waiting for the water break, and then kill her as soon as uh, the wall is broken. And she's trying to plant. Or does the sage stop planting and then now the plant is delayed by a lot? Or well, the plant might not even happen at all because like um the wall is broken and now the sage is like hesitant whether she's to plant or not, because now the more and more doubt you see it in the enemy's mind, the more time you buy for your team. Now your jet can get position, now your sky can get on site, she can start ulting, flashing, whatever for you, right? So like these minor mistakes just like kind of snowball. Iron more and more. This mistake where like we leave this wall open and now we're in this like we get a gun upgrade but is it really worth it? Now this that's taking one v one. Yep, takes one v one. We're forced to take one v one and this is a very common angle. Like there's only one angle they have to watch just left side of the wall. Which doubles up as an angle that they will watch for, for B Hall anyways. And then another mistake we we dry peek. Spike planted. You dry peek with, with no util. Oh great, a great flash. Too slow on the Too slow on the swing now. Let's see. It was the sage actually. The sage was actually hugging the wall. Yeah, the swing could have been faster. She also could have flashed over the wall to make it easier to swing faster. But, not on you, that's on you. On the sky. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, no. Okay, so let me switch then. Switch to... Sublime? Do you see my Sublime? Yeah. Okay, so Meiju, which at the beginning you're really too often, I'd say that this is more like minor now, because it only happens at the earlier rounds that you really reload too often. But definitely, consistently, and this is no particular order. I'd say probably the most important thing is like uh, probably this one, but I say that uh, some issues I've seen so far themes that are major issues like after you get a kill, you in general should always expect a refrag or trade from the enemy. So examples like uh, let's see. Well, in this case, this, this jet was unknown. Over here, yeah, this is a great example. Wait, we kill this Brim, we overheal, which we don't even need to. 
fine, whatever. And then we just like continue pushing aggressively. Actually, this is a sage, this is a sage on a minimap. <laughs> We're just pushing and reloading into her. And luckily our team kind of backs us up, but we should be more aware of that. Just be like, I killed this Grim. Like, this Citrus, Citrus, they win. We made noise A main. We made noise mid. We gotta kill in mid. Anybody who's on B site or like B link, they're gonna be rotating immediately. Two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, one, five seconds. Now at this point, you should be aware. Like, people who are voting, this, this BIM probably came from B. There was probably a second person from B, therefore, this BIM's not alone. I killed this BIM, there should be another person here. And then we survived this, but we probably could have died. So, okay. after getting a kill, in general, you should always expect a refrag or a trade from the enemy. Uh, let's see, also, you didn't have your so I won't ding you on that. Uh, when your team has an advantage, numbers, gun advantage, etc., try to abuse that advantage as much as possible. So, for example, a gun advantage versus, versus an enemy eco round, try not to take too many risks. Um, let's see if I can find an example of that. But I think you kind of get the idea because I talked about it a lot. I think more so like this post plants, which is more of an issue on, on the other. One enemy remaining. Um, not really. But anyways, yeah. Whenever your team has advantage, it'd be as much- oh, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, because this, this is a numbers advantage right here. <sighs> this is a numbers advantage, we want just chill. And let the sage peek into us instead of us swinging. So let's see what else. Uh, before committing to an aggressive play, this is by far the biggest issue. Before you commit to any sort of any sort of play, even whether it's aggressive or not, just like ask your team for help. Like you have double initiators, but you you're not really playing around the fact that you have double initiators. The fact that you don't have your team doesn't have a sentinel. You have things to watch your flank, but in exchange of a sentinel, you have way more initiator power you have way more flashes you have more, way more utility to help you take space rather than hold space right sentinels are there to hold space to put a wall put a trip whatever but you don't have that instead you have tools to help you take space easily freely for free for a flash they'll be blinded they can't even fight back right try to abuse that as much as possible any angle that you're you're sus about just say hey can you flash this for me can you flash this corner for me easy Get a free kill. Okay. So, I think if you, you fix this one thing, you're easily going to climb a rank. Because, like, your mechanics are good enough, you're top fragging, you can top frag even harder if you just ask for the right util. Alright. That would make sense. Okay, uh, what else? Crosshair placement. There's many times you kind of keep your crosshair a bit too low, or it's, like, at a wall, and you just, like, you're relying too heavily on flicking, so... I'd say like try to keep your crosshair at a potential threat. Don't just rely on a wall. Don't rely on flicking. Rely on where your crosshair is placed. If you're forced to make a flick, most likely you already made a mistake. Either there's a gap in your awareness, you weren't aware that you were exposed to an angle, or you were in a bad position, your positioning was bad, you were you were put in a position where you had to watch multiple angles at the same time. Try not to do that. Try to keep yourself exposed to one angle at a time. So that you can keep your crosshair placed at one angle at a time. Okay. Okay. And then, like, for most people, this is kind of a, a minor thing, but in your scenarios, it's become a major issue that's kind of snowballed into other issues that's kind of lost your team many rounds. Is the fact that the sage wall stays up for a very long time. There's many scenarios where the wall goes up, and then, I mean, for the first, like, two seconds, you can, like, just toss a bunch of bullets at the wall and break a segment immediately, like that last round. And as soon as the wall is like broken, it's lost a huge amount of its value. But the longer the wall stays up, the more and more value is going to get over time. And that's been a very common theme whenever that uh, you're trying to play like B retake. That this wall goes up and it gets a huge amount of value for the enemy team. Like, like round winning value, just because no one wants to break the wall. So try to think of it like... Any opportunity that you have, any spare seconds, any spare ammo that you have, just spend it breaking the wall. Okay. Okay, so those are the major issues so far. Before I go further, um, do you have any questions so far? No, I don't. Okay. 
And on the minor things, yeah, you kind of reload too often, but that's only happens sometimes. Uh, most of the time, you're more cautious about reloading, which is good. Um, try to be careful about overheating. Try to think about what fights you want to take and where. Where do you want to take? Where do you want to take those fights? How do I make those fights advantageous? This is kind of tied to um, when you um, this bullet point number three when you're trying to go for an aggressive play. Some sometimes those plays are. <laughs> A little too aggressive it's like you get a kill and you continue pushing like let's see there's like an example like you on on a site for example like this one even and that's an awesome not to me sometime that we end on a okay here here's an example like bike is down i mean i get that we want to like get as much control of site as possible but like, we just need control of backside. That's really it. And then, okay, we kind of lazily cleared it, but okay, now backside is cleared, right? It's not really that crucial to like get into dugout. It's more important that we have someone sitting A main. We have someone maybe covering the flank for A main. We have maybe someone like watching art, or we can you can have just just the sky, for example, just sky sitting on site. And the the theme of this should be. Let's play post plant. That's the overall theme. Let's not take any unnecessary fights. Let's not push through CT like we're about to do here. Right? This is kind of like overheating, right? right now. Well, actually, no. Actually, in this case, we don't actually push through CT. But this is another, another example we push through CT. But just the fact that we're kind of going to dugout, like this is unnecessary. If someone peeks us from here, we can't get traded. And now everyone, your whole team, is all in one v one situations, one one v one positions. This this chaos forced to watch his flank by himself. There's no one who can like finagle this corner. Um, actually, am I sharing my screen? I just realized. <laughs> are, you, are you gonna see this? Nothing art right now. Yes. No. Maybe. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you see my screen? I just realized I wasn't showing the light screen. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So I was, yeah, I was showing you like the on the video. Here we're like, we're we're in like not very optimal kind of formation for our team. Everyone's kind of playing split. It's like we're not really able to play off each other. So what I would like to see is like. This guy's planning, bomb's planning. I want the theme to be let's just chill and play post plant. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, okay. I just overextended too much in that situation when it wasn't necessary. Okay, so let's go back to Sublime. So, Sublime, let's see. Uh, let's see, on Eco Rounds, try to look to make crazy YOLO plays and also try to be in full, full detail as much as possible. So let's see an example. Example, a good example is when you like, um, you know, like the hero ran on defense. Okay, that was like a save round. This is a buy round. Let's see, after, after we lose this one, I think. Okay, here's an example. We have the hero phantom. I like the idea. It's crazy YOLO play. The pump. No. Pong is not really like building a, a plan with our teammates, we're kind of like doing it by ourselves. So here I was like trying to give an example of, like, if our, if our crazy play is to have a, a hero phantom, then let's get a whole team on board. Let's make this like, hey, let's 5 stack A, let's 5 stack B, we'll retake the other side, whatever. And then let's, let's like push through A, let's push through B and look to take early fights, something like that, something crazy. Should I should I be more focused instead of like trying to go for picks here? Just play for site defense. No. Like just no. No, you don't want you don't want to because playing site defense is in general passive, right? That's not yeah. as much of a crazy old play. Like passive is what you do on a normal round. Think about think about uh, what you would normally do on a normal round, and try to do something opposite of that. 
try to think of like um like what's your your craziest fantasy round that you want to have happen that you just want to like it has a one percent chance of winning but whatever let's do it because it's eco round doesn't matter and just do that like if you're on controllers it could be like oh it's it's triple if you're on brim like triple smoke mid or something and it's like crab walk through the smoke something stupid like that that you would that would you would only do on like an eco round but if it ends up working out then great you've got like you win the round you or you get a bunch of gun upgrades or whatever for some reason the enemy team like pushes through the three smokes and then you just get like, a bunch of free like classic right clicks or something right just try to like think of like some some crazy play okay Okay. Crab walk through smokes. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's I've done that before, <laughs> and you'd be surprised. God. There's one time it works out, and then like you magically win the round off that dumb play, on on a round that you otherwise would have guaranteed lost if you were to play normally. Okay, so okay. yeah, I think that's all the notes I had so far. I think yeah, overall like definitely just fix this. <laughs> Just work for your team, yeah. and then you, you'll you be golden. You're going to gain a rank easily. You're going to rank up easily if you just work with your teammates. All right. Hell yeah. I'm going to... Let me just screenshot this real quick. I can just copy and paste this for you. All right. Any questions? Alrighty. Some no. Um. Uh. Not. Not. Not for the time being. All right. All yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Play for a bit. If you want, like another review, we can set up another one. Just awesome. record another one. So yeah, let okay. me know. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, cool. I'll I'll let you know before I send you a video and then just review it whenever you have time. All right. Awesome. And I'll, I'll send awesome. you this uh, this link. I'll upload this like YouTube or something and send it to you. Alrighty, I appreciate it. All right, see, see you again, man. Alrighty, take care.